All right, it is Wednesday, and we're back with another daily devotion. Uh, my daily devotions are going through Scripture and showing how God's Word is so powerfully woven together to tell one story about God interacting with His people and His master plan of sending Jesus into the world to redeem us, to bring us back to Him. And the chapter today, we've been in Psalms for a little while, the chapter today is about atonement. And it comes from Isaiah chapter 53. That is our verse for today. So let's take a look at it. Isaiah 53 verse 5. We read this a lot of times around the Easter season when we celebrate the resurrection here in church. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment um, upon him was the chastisement or the punishment that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed. By his wounds we are healed. We celebrate Jesus' sacrifice. I love that that's why uh, we celebrate communion every Sunday as part of the worship service, is to remember that we are, uh, we are healed, we are forgiven because of Jesus' sacrifice. The concept of atonement is, uh, is a little bit tricky. Atonement's not a word you probably don't use uh, in your day-to-day -day life, but atonement basically means that you owed a debt and somebody else has paid for it. They have atoned for your debt. They have taken care of it, and that's exactly what Jesus has done for us. But the cool thing is, is that atonement is collective. Jesus didn't just, um, he, he didn't just provide a sacrifice for an individual, though we enjoy the individual benefits of it in terms of God and, and how he views sin. Atonement was collective. This was a concept from the old, that we see throughout the Old Testament where uh, a sacrifice would be made by the high priest for the nation of Israel. And so uh, Leviticus talks a lot about the sacrifice and about atonement sacrifices. And uh, so this is not just individual, it is collective. And so whether we realize it or not, our own nation is experiencing, um, while our nation is experiencing unprecedented levels of moral bankruptcy, it's not just, um, it's not just me who's in need of a savior, it's we the people, it's, it's all of us in, in this country. But we see that there is the great fulfillment of Isaiah 53 as the, the suffering servant, as it would be called, um, throughout the New Testament. We see it in Jesus. In fact, look at this. Um, Isaiah 52, 14 says, His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance. It fits the description of his brutal beatings. Isaiah 53, verse 2 says, He had no form or majesty that we should look at him. That was true of a peasant carpenter. Verse 3, he was despised and rejected by men. This was true during his execution. Hi, good morning, Jerry. Thanks for joining us. He, was, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions. With his wounds we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, stricken for the transgression of my people. That's verse 4 through 8 of Isaiah 53, and those are descriptions of the cross. They made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, verse 9. This is a poetic juxtaposition here of the criminals that were crucified besides Jesus and then the tomb that Jesus was laid in, the, uh, the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man in which Jesus was buried. And verse 10, when his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. These statements predict the resurrection of Jesus. And on and on. I encourage you to go back and look through Isaiah chapter 53 and look through it in, um, in the eyes of how Jesus would fulfill those prophecies that were spoken about him hundreds of years before he would walk the earth. And so let's, let's sit under that this week. Let's, let's um, Let's in reverence understand that we have a right relationship with God, not because, um, not because we are good people or somehow our, our good outweighs our bad, but we have a good Savior. We have a, a Savior that is a suffering servant on our behalf, and that our, our sins, our iniquities, our transgressions were on Him, and by His wounds 
we are healed. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Praise God for Jesus. I don't know about you. That gets me a little excited today. It will allow me to uh, to have a little bit of uh, pep in my step. And I haven't even had any coffee this morning. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about who Jesus is. I'm excited that we have a faith that is alive, that is active. We have a word that we can build our life upon, and it is a firm foundation. And we have someone who has gone before us, a high priest, Jesus Christ, who is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. It's a lamp to our feet. It's a light for our path. It shows us where we need to go. It, it reminds us of the great promises that we have in you, the chief of which is Jesus Christ. So thankful for his atoning sacrifice today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, thanks for tracking along with us. We'll be back again with Facebook Live uh, tomorrow morning. And um, please invite friends, neighbors, coworkers, anyone to join us for church on Sunday, 9 o'clock and 1030 a.m. are the services. And there's all sorts of ways to get plugged in um, more and more as restrictions get lifted and uh, we're able to meet together. So look forward to seeing you and uh, we'll talk again soon. Bye.